Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Welcome to Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Yeah. Big Mama's house. Welcome to Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Welcome back to Big Mama's house, y'all. Mama and Papa back here with you again to talk about Welcome to Plathville, Season 4, Episode 10. Hello, y'all. Hope y'all are doing very well this beautiful day. And we are happy to hear, see you and hear from you. And, you know, I we really appreciate you guys listening and all the likes. And if you feel like subscribing to us, because it's free. Free! Um, that would mean a lot to us. We really, really appreciate you guys. And don't forget, we are now on Reddit. We have a sub, sub Reddit, I guess it's called, um, Big Mama's House Podcast. I know nothing about Reddit, so. Um, but we're on all platforms. We are on um, Spotify, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, X, which is Twitter. Yeah. Um, Reddit. I We have a TikTok, but we haven't really done anything with it yet because I don't haven't figured out how. Um, we're not on Apple yet. No. Um, we might graduate there someday. Maybe. We'll see. But in the meantime, we're happy to have you with us, and we're thankful that you're here. Um, so, we started out this episode with Micah in Venice. He's seeing his friend Michael, and he was also homeschooled, and he wanted to be a priest, a pastor. Um, but he switched paths, and is now an artist. Um, he is having an art show, and he needs a bartender. And guess who has bartended once before? Micah! Micah! So he's going to be his free bartender. And I think it's going to be fun for him. Um, and then we are off with Barry and Isaac. They are moving and assembling a bed in the apartment above the, the dance studio for Kim. And at this point, they think it's going to be a vacation rental. And Kim doesn't want to go to therapy to try um, with Barry. She said, we've tried. I tried. And um, she needs to talk to him because she wants a D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Do you think that she might have had uh, fish on a line before all this happened? No, I really don't. You, I don't, think... you don't think she uh, had a boyfriend before this? I mean, during this, I should say? No, I really don't. Okay. At this point, I mean, with the filming and everything, there's be no way to hide a boyfriend or anything at this point. But so, well, especially if they got to sign something, you know, right? Yeah. And because she wants to talk to Barry, she sends Isaac off to get breakfast. <laughs> um, and then Kim said that she tried to give him time, but it's time. And it's been several months. Several months ago, she talked to him about how harsh he was at times. And he took his frustrations out on her. And she never knew what mood he'd be in. And that affected her. And how she felt about herself and about everything. And Barry just kind of smirks at her. You know, that whatever face. Yeah, and, that So, like, he knows it's true. Face. Yeah. You know, he doesn't deny anything. Yeah. And he even says, guilty as charged. And Kim said, after that talk, he seemed only did enough to get her to stay but not really valuing me and loving me for who I am. That's not a marriage I want to save. That's a marriage I want out of. And Barry goes, I know. I know. I'm like, if you know, what the fuck, dude? Then why are you whispering on camera? Well, what? not only that, but if you know these are all issues, why haven't you done anything about it? Yeah. Oh, hang on, guys. Sorry, y'all. A little man had a wheeze. We had to take care of him. Okay, and then Barry said, she said I don't value her as a person. I think that's a lie. She's believing. What a weird way to put it. He's just a weird dude. First of all, who would lie to him? Who would lie to her for her to believe it? Right, that's what I'm saying. It's a very weird way yeah. to put it. And he says, on the flip side, which he says often, that reality is a reality to her. That's an old man thing to say. Her default kicks in, and or my default kicks in, and I, di I don't say anything. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Like Ethan. Ethan. Yeah. And part of that is a defense mechanism. It might be all the hurt that I've experienced. I'm not open. Here's my thought. That's a very narcissistic way to think. Also, if you are aware that you have a default mode or a defense mechanism, yeah. 
there's no excuse for continuing to do it. Yeah. You, just, you know it's there. Okay, stop. Try to change it somehow. Especially if you know that that's the reason your wife is leaving you. Because she doesn't feel she can be emotionally connected to I you. I actually think he didn't believe that at first. That she was leaving? Until she actually... Oh, I agree. Either. I 100% agree. He was calling her bluff. Yep. And, well, and, no, she called his bluff. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. And she was like, fine, I'm out. Peace. Yeah. You know, Peace out. out. Yeah. And Barry says, I still love her. But to Kim, he says, I didn't think the consequences would be like this. There's nothing right now I can do that would change your course. No, just give her space. I'm coming to terms with that. And he, the, He's right. At this point in time, there's nothing he can do. Yep, he's done fucked it up. What he's doing right now, okay, giving the space and everything. Okay, space, whatever. We that's, we say that all the time on the show, you know. Yeah. And maybe she'll come back to him. Maybe she'll see him change. But I, again, I, I've been like that with my first husband, yeah. that short-term change and then a gradual slide right back in the same behavior yeah. until i get fed up and we fight and argue and i'm i'm done with this shit and he's like no no, no i'm gonna change i'm gonna change and i think the best he can hope for is become good friends yes exactly and then the producer asks is there any hope for reconciliation barry said there's always an outside chance of a miracle but right now nobody's sitting around waiting for the miracle um he says, because the relationship is D-O-A. He's always got to be the witty one. And I'm like, you think you sound really smart? But again, he's putting blame, that, that subtle blame. Mm -hmm. He's like, there's always an outside chance for a miracle, but right now nobody's sitting around waiting for the miracle. So basically... And he's thinking she's not waiting for the miracle. She's just moving on and saying screw not it. Not just that. I mean, if he doesn't think he's done anything wrong. Well, right. He's like, oh, there's going to be a miracle that I still changed her mind and decided to put up with my shit some more. Instead of saying, look, yes, I did wrong. I it love her. I'm love... so sad. I screwed Give up. us a tear, Barry. Show yeah. us that you have emotions. Yeah. And then we're back with freaking Ethan and Mariah at the beach, and they're being buddies. There's no drama or conflict. I actually do like that scene. I do, too. Um, and Ethan said he misses the country, his cars and everything. How can you be in a beach and miss the country? But he likes it there, too. And Mariah says she misses it, too. I don't know how. I mean, you miss probably your, your childhood. The Here's wrong the thing. thing. We, our dream is to move to Hawaii. Yes. Okay. I would still need to go into the mountains every once in a while. And I'd be around vegetation and more like... We could move in the mountains. The forest feel. Because yeah. that's what we're used to. Well, because you saw the houses that were up in the mountains. Well, that's what I'm saying. We would need to do that instead of the like, because everyone's like, yes, the beach is beautiful. It's like amazing. No, I'm just saying. I know what you're saying. Yes. You go in the country. Yeah, stay the with beach. me. I'm staying with you. Along. I'm staying with you. Um, but yeah, I would need some sort of forestry in my life at some point. Okay. I would miss it. Mallow. What? That's what Mallow said. Not enough nature. Well, I mean, on the beach, no. But, you know, if you. It's could... an island. There's all, there's nature everywhere. But okay, anyway. Um, and then Mariah said she wants to go home for Joshua's birthday to visit his grave with all the siblings and the family. Yeah. And then Ethan brings up that Mariah got behind on bills uh while she was in mourning for Max and their relationship. She was crushed, depressed, and there was a few months where I paid all of Mariah's bills. Well, if he can pay for cars, he can help his sister out. Yeah, I mean she was obviously going through a terrible, terrible time. I mean, she lost weight. She couldn't afford to yeah. lose. She became, like, paper white. You know, she just looks very, very frail. And you can tell she was not in a healthy place. So, it's like, why, again, he's turning into Olivia. He's nitpicking someone who's already down. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And Ethan said, but then she started hanging out and making friends and paid off all her bills in two weeks. Yay. So obviously it's not like she's just mooching. She was just going through a really, really hard time. And it's good that he was there for her and, you know, was, you know, willing to help her out during her time of, you know, mourning, yes. basically. Yeah, it's her time of need. But then the, to snark about it, I mean. That is a very Olivia thing to do. Right. It's, ugh. But then Ethan puts on his flippers and his goggles and the snorkel. And he he's just a funny dude whenever he's just being him. Yeah. 
and he said he likes his gear and it, it's not but it's not easy to run flippers but man you can see the athleticism in him when he does run across the beach in flippers because you have to get your legs and feet up really high and keep them there so you don't trip and fall on your face you can see the athlete in him when he's running across the yard jumping a tree true <laughs> or jumping over a fence very true you don't need flippers and then we're back with Micah in L.A. and he's bartending and his friends are there, Hayden and Capiche. And then and Antia arrives. If you guys don't remember, Antia was the lady, I think she was from Spain. Or yeah, wasn't she a friend of a friend? Yeah, she's a friend of um, Hayden's girlfriend. Okay. Because um, his girlfriend's from Spain or some or somewhere over there too. They, they talk pretty good English now. Yeah, they really flex accents. I like their accents. But anyway, Antia is... In my opinion, uh, not the right girl for him, but she is the right girl for him right now. Yeah, it's the right now girl, basically, yeah. Um, and so he's getting everybody drunk because he's not a good bartender, and he's just, is just getting everybody trashed. And then Antia gets drunk, and she's acting thirsty. He's the best kind of bartender. Right? Yeah. Especially as I'm pretty sure it was a free you get, bar. You get more of what you pay for. Exactly. I think it was an open bar. But uh, he was not charging his friends, even if it wasn't. But she was acting thirsty for more than just booze, y'all. And then Capiche keeps interrupting, and she <laughs> says he cock-blocked her. Um, and then, yeah, and then poor Capiche says that he's bad at social cues. Because, again, that's not his the, exactly, culture. Yeah, yeah. And so he was just looking for a trash can. And, like, he didn't understand that, like, they were in the middle of a thirst trap situation. And he ruined it. Yeah. He's but, a ruiner. Uh, but we know that Micah likes Antia a bit, too. I think he likes any girl that is ballsy enough to say she likes him. Yeah. Or to, like, make the first Or, or like, think of him as, like, a toy. You know what I mean? Like, he's good looking, you know, and tell him he's good looking. Right. And then we're back in Florida, and Olivia had a pole installed in her bedroom for her and Mariah to practice their pole dancing. And Not, they are all getting packed to go home for Joshua's birthday. That photography business must be booming. Right? And then Olivia smacks Ethan's butt really hard. And Ethan said, stop slapping my butt. And the girls laugh. And I'm like, if you're smacking someone in a way that makes them uncomfortable, even if it's your spouse, and they ask you to stop repeatedly, you should respect their feelings and stop. I don't think Ethan likes PTA. PDA. I don't right. think he likes getting slapped on his ass, and but, she smacked him hard. Well, maybe in private, but I don't think he liked it in front of those girls. For in front friends. of his sister. In front of his, yes, exactly. Like Mariah, and was there another friend there? No, it was just Mariah. Oh, just Mariah. Yeah, so he didn't really, he didn't feel comfortable getting spanked by his wife in front of his sibling. That could be a very, yeah, because you're very anti-PDA. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then uh, Mariah said that, I'm just saying. No, I know. You're saying yeah. Mariah said she's planning two separate visits to the grave, one with all the siblings and then one with the parents. And then whoever, you know, wanted to go to that one. Yeah. Um, and Ethan plays with his remote control plane outside while the girls pack and talk. Um, and Olivia reached out to Barry to let him know she's coming with them and wants to get together. Again, I think with her right now, she wants to take control. Yeah. You know, she's like, oh, Ethan's talking to Barry. I'm going to be stuck. No, in. I'm going to talk to Barry. Right. But I wanted to be on my terms. So yep. I'm going to message him and like be the, be, be do it first. It's always control with Libby. And then she told uh, him, Barry, last week that since they're separated, separated now, she wants a fresh start. Because, you know. Because it's always Kim. Right. Barry's an innocent, poor victim. And in the eight years she's known them, Barry has beliefs she doesn't agree with and might have said things that were hurtful sometimes. But she truly doesn't think he ever meant to be unkind or hurt her or anything like that. He was always welcoming from day one. Even the things he said to me were kind of dictated by Kim. How does she know that? Yeah. Like, little, like that's an assumption. That's most likely Ethan telling her that. Maybe. Um, and like private or something. She said it feels so much different, easier. And I'm thinking it's easier to tell lies. Yeah. Because Kim isn't there to defend herself or to tell any other side of the story. And so they're always going to make up a story that makes them all look innocent and good. And she's just the evil, 
and well, she's not there so right so she, she can't, can't defend herself exactly um she's never there when they're doing this right yeah no she gets left out and then mariah said she feels weird about olivia inviting barry to the farm for the kids gathering which was mariah's event she organized everything that's nice and she said we're just going to end up doing things on her terms now meaning olivia yes yeah because she was trying to she invited barry to the farm when mariah had done it all up just so the kids could all be there together there weren't supposed to be any parents it was just supposed to be the kids and then olivia went and inserted herself and invited barry and so now it's going to be it's, it's going to complicate things well, see here's the thing she but she's also realizing that olivia is a controlling person yes yeah that was all point. like she quoted that's a quote we're just gonna end up doing things on her terms now and i think that there's trouble in paradise oh yeah that's the it's, start it's starting to it's brew start. and also everyone will be there but him and how fucking right is that that's some bullshit well, right there we all know and i'm just saying we'll get there and no it is it is it is a bunch of crap yes and Mariah tells Olivia that parents still believe the same things, but there's a much higher level of acceptance now. And Olivia said she's trying to figure out what level she's comfortable with regarding going to Cairo and how much uh, is in her life. I I mean... She hates Cairo, babe. Yes, and I'm just like... I just don't know what to say about Olivia anymore. Yeah, I mean, I just like we repeat the same things about her. Yeah over yeah. and over so yeah i'm just gonna report it and try not to be so negative about her even though it's hard so then ethan mariah and olivia drive to caro and they call micah to see if kim is home uh they're gonna stop by and pick up the kids um but olivia hasn't seen them since moving to tampa and that's her fault yes all right. they could have been seeing the kids this entire time he goes up there to fix his cars yes and She'd it's like yeah is it so dumb they could have had a relationship with the kids the entire time. All they had to do was fake a relationship with the parents if they really couldn't stand them. Yeah. It's not complicated. It, people do it all the time. Right? Exes do it all the time. Yeah. Um, And she said she wouldn't have gone if Kim were home. And Olivia said, quote, Kim dictated what our relations with both of them look like. Um, So Barry is the innocent, beaten down puppet who um the, who just is innocent little boob and all this yep. and kim is the evil mastermind trying to control everybody Mrs. but Despicable. again she's she's describing herself yeah when she says dictates what our relations look like with both of them she's dictating well if you don't let me see the kids we're not talking to you you're not going to get to see your son yeah and, and that's and, and to me that's ethan's fault yes but it's like they, they do the same thing. Yeah. And it, it's, they're so hypocritical. Yep. Yeah. And then, hypocrites in this show. Uh, Mariah leans on the doorbell and the door opens and it's Isaac and he says, Dad is pissed. And this is important because er, Kim's the mean one, right? Yeah. And Barry inside yells, You're being annoying. And Isaac said, That was not good. <laughs> and Ethan immediately goes, That was not me. It was Mariah, Dad. And Barry's like, why is she being like that? And, Ms., you know, Mariah's just giggling and apologizing because she's just happy to see her siblings and everything. Yeah, I don't know why Barry's overreacting. But again, the, the reaction there and how the boys were like, oh my God, oh my God, dad's upset. Something is they funky. They want cameras in there. So there's something funky in Plathville. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, this, in this scene, you know, the season, this yeah. episode, there were, no, there were no cameras or anything back there. They're all out, outside. Yeah. So of course he could have let his guard down, and then he you know realized, oh well, it's Ethan and Mariah and the cameras. Hey, happy, happy. Right. Well, and then Barry tells Ethan that they're getting a divorce, and um, and made him question a lot of things, like he and Olivia getting divorced too. Yeah. Um, and that it might actually be a possibility because I guess he never considered it one before because it's just not what you do, and then. Barry tells Ethan and Isaac that he's getting to the other side of grief and anger, but this isn't what he wanted. Campaign, campaign, campaign. No, eventually he's got to stop. And then Barry tells Ethan that he could find out more if he asked Kim. She's got her side of the story, and he needs to meet with her alone and talk. 
Um, but Barry is enough for one trip. Which was nice for Barry. Yeah. To say, look, you know, you've heard my side. But yeah, I think of, he's only saying that for the cameras. Instead of saying, well, well, regardless, you know, it's he's saying it. Yeah. You know, instead of saying, don't go, your mom is going to lie. No. You're gonna, you know, he's like, go listen to your mom's side of the story. I think a lot of that is for the camera, but that's just my opinion. And then Kim's at her apartment above the studio, and everyone is meeting at the farm. Um, but Ethan and Olivia don't want her there, so she wasn't invited because they dictate. Yep. Everyone's relationships. Not Kim. Olivia. And Kim said she really doesn't understand how she hurt Olivia. And Kim should be there more than... Olivia shouldn't even be allowed to be there. Because Olivia wasn't even there when it happened, was she? No. no. And unfortunately, Kim... We really, I mean... Heck, I mean, this is bad. As the mother, she has not, all not the just rights that. to everything, I think, with... The memorial yes, and yes. everything. Not just that, but from what through. happened. That yeah. happened. Yes. Kim needs to be there more than anybody. Yes. Um, and she knows that Ethan didn't like being homeschooled, but she feels like the punishment doesn't doesn't fit the crime. It's uncalled for to alienate her from the rest of the family. And she also feels it's important for Ethan and Barry to reconnect. And she's willing to stay out of the picture to allow it to happen. It's not like she locked them into a room. And said, do your schoolwork and you can come out until your schoolwork's done. She probably should have. Maybe they well, yeah, would have education. It's not like she did that. Right. You know, she had tortured them into doing the schoolwork. No, and that's the point. They didn't do it. And now they're not as smart as they could be. But that's on them. Like Mariah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, But I think it's really important that all this stuff, she's like, she wants everyone else to have a relationship. And she is willing to sit it out and not push and be there so that everybody can reconnect. Tell me she's the controlling, manipulative one. I, I'm... I, agree with you she's not i'm just pointing it out there but i just don't how is she i don't understand the people that are saying this what they are seeing that we're not seeing yeah i i i would love for someone and, to explain and, and it if you're one of those people that commented against against kim and say kim's controlling please comment on our comments to the uh yeah, let us, let us know, know. The heck i don't get it get let us know what we're missing I, I we go in a detailed detailed description of these things and, like, if you can give me just as detailed, re like, reasons of why you believe that Kim is the bad guy, I will totally buy in. I will be happy to change my opinion. But I, right now, I just don't see it. But then we are with Mariah, and she's eavesdropping on Barry's conversation with Ethan and Isaac about the <laughs> divorce. And she asks him how she can help him. And Barry said, he just, he said, just be cute and visit occasionally. That is so fucking demeaning. You know, he's sitting down having a, a serious discussion with his sons An about adult it, conversation, yeah. But with mm -hmm. Mariah, oh, it'll just be cute. You know. Just, oh, sexist. Well, I think he knows... See, I like Mariah. Right? She's yeah. one of my favorites. But she's not, as far as common sense, yeah. she doesn't have much of it. Yeah. You know? And she's because it's because she's young. And she really is young. So, she's only like 19. I mean, not just physically, but mentally. I believe she's young too. All right. So, I mean, maybe he thinks, well, she's not going to get, gonna, she's not going to get the reason of the divorce. Isaac's younger than her by several I, years. Isaac is was more still in the room. Mature. In my opinion, that's Isaac. Point. No, no, I, I see your point. I'm just saying that's what he's Barry's a sexist. Thinking. He is a sexist, yes. That's, that's that. And the um, way the kids grow up and the way he treated Kim proves that he's sexist. Yeah, I completely agree. Why'd you pause? Because I was trying to figure out where I was. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, and he said, Ethan told Larry and the family that he knows he has to speak to Kim at some point, but not today. Um, they're all going to the farm. Oh, yeah, that, that would be the worst day, yes. Yeah. Um, and then the producer to Olivia said, how do you feel about that? And then Olivia said she has feelings about it, but not it's not her decision, and it's not her place to say anything. And, only, right? Right? Yeah, and I'm yeah, just like, to shut up. like, what's up with that? That's the first time you've ever said you don't have a place to say something because you always insert yourself in everything. Um, And Mariah said this was supposed to be a sibling trip and then Olivia invited Barry and that's now complicated because some of them feel bad about mom being left out. And they feel bad because everyone is working on the relationship with Barry, but mom is excluded from everything. And then all the kids go to the farm and Barry goes later. 
And Olivia said, I can see why Kim and Barry would want to go to the grave site themselves. Gee, thanks for realizing it since it's their baby, you fucking heartless bitch. Yeah, but, Olivia, you, you, yeah. But, but it's not something she's counting on. Only It's only been a family thing once. Okay, so just because the kids have only been old enough to go to the gravesite with their parents for a couple of years, and maybe it did start to become a thing because of the cameras, you know? Maybe it did, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe once a year you do need to come together and realize, hey, we are lucky to be here. You know, we need to be more appreciative that, yeah. you know, we're on this earth and we need to work shit out and figure out how to be happy because it, life is short. Well, see, this goes against the grain for Olivia. All right, this this here brings the family together. Well, she exactly. wants them apart. So she's like, she wants no part of this, even though it has nothing to do with her anyway. She shouldn't really, be there. Nothing to do with her at all. Now, I mean, except I'm, to support her exactly. husband. Exactly. I was about to say that. I mean, she needs to be there to support Ethan. But other than that, that's it. Like, when your pap died, mm -hmm. okay? You were there with me. He was a lovely, lovely man. Yep. I had only met him a couple of times. He was your favorite grandparent that was still alive. And obviously, you you were devastated. We were, you were close, yes. You were very devastated. And I went knowing I would be your support. It mm -hmm. wasn't about me. So everything was about how are you feeling? How are you doing? How can I help you? Is yep. there anything I can do to get you, you know, help you through this? And you just wanted me to be there. But see, here's the difference, though. You're not Olivia. My parents like you. You're not trying to split my parents up. You're not no. trying to break the family. No. Up. Like Olivia. Right. Okay. No, that's so, very true. So there's a difference there. But I'm just like, it's not about you. And why would you? And like, because it wasn't my family member yeah. who passed. You know what I mean? It was, it, you should be there to support the person whose family was, it was, is killed or died. And I just don't understand how she doesn't, anybody can defend that. Nobody can. I mean, I mean if you, if you can, well, then you might. If you look, think uh, Olivia had more of a right to be at that graveside than Kim at that time. I, you have to explain to me how you get to that reasoning because it was Kim's child. Olivia didn't even know them when this happened. They were all very, very small, yeah. very young. And it's got nothing to do with her except to support Ethan, which she wasn't doing. Nope. So it's like... You're trying to bring them apart even more. It, I'm, I don't know, you guys. If you... At least Mariah. If anything good kept, happened here, Mariah got to see the real side of Olivia. For a minute, yes, she did. No, no, no this is the start. Yes, you because... Know. What happened to Joshua affected all of them very deeply, except for, of course, the younger ones who weren't even born. Um, I mean, Mariah seen it happen. Yes. And so, I mean, from from Mariah up, they all had different variants of, of issues with their grief and dealing yep. with that. So, um, yeah, in my opinion, she was completely wrong. And in the next episode, we will kind of cover the actual graveside visit and the aftermath of that so we hope to see you back again for welcome to plastville season four episode 11 until then you guys please stay new to your pet subscribe please wear your seatbelt subscribe please use your turn signal comment and please 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 you guys i know i'm i'm such a hypocrite for saying it because i'm so mean about olivia but be kind in real life out there like i don't post things about her that's super negative like, I just, I'm telling you my opinion because I it hurts me to see good people be taken advantage of or misled or lied to yeah. or taken advantage of in some way. It just upsets me. And so it's, I, that's how, because I have no other way to deal with it. It comes out in words. Yes. So I apologize if I offend you guys or say, you know, obviously I, I try to be kind to people in, in reality. And even on the internet, I don't say nasty, ugly things. That's why I didn't comment on those people. Yeah, yeah. because this is not cool to be like that. Yeah. But anyway, guys, until then, be kind and try to, you know, do something nice for somebody else today. All right? And until next time. Bye. bye.